department officially started uh, in 1992. Okay. Uh, before then, uh, the constructed a committee under Professor Y. Uh, Yu, who was the Dazo Academic Plan at that time. Okay. Uh, but five of us were on the committee uh, Mr. Munesa, myself, okay. and the Kamara, is in Uganda, is in Mbako, and uh, Professor Chebu. Okay. So we were meeting because the, the idea, the, at that time, the Department of Sociology was running one of the uh, communication one or two point of courses. Okay. So the, the department, the university felt we should have an autonomous department. Again, that time, before that time, there was a center in the university, a center for identification and extension services. Okay. It was running a diploma program in journalism. So, eventually, we now felt that instead of just limiting itself to a diploma program, the university should also start a diploma program. So, in essence, by 1992, the okay. Senate approved takeoff of the Department of Mass Communication. They employed uh, two people. Okay. One is uh, Frank Kamara, he's an Uganda, and then one lady. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, Sarah to Abdul Wahid. Okay. Uh, those are the actually the staff. But in 1992, during Professor Sarah, during his time as the vice, he brought up the idea again, and then they started it. And the first person who was head of the department was Professor Chegu. Okay. Uh, they named that library of time. Okay. The mass uh, library. That mass library. Okay. Then he was Dr. Chegu, and he was uh, the acting head of the department okay. uh, when the, the first set of students came in. But Dr. Degoshi took over, then became head of the department for about four years. Okay. He was the one who graduated the first set. 68 or 60? Students. Mm. Mm. We graduated that year. We had a first class that year. Mm. And that's uh, this professor, Daniel Chu. Uh, that time, when we started, Dr. Ujegu, myself, Dr. Ize, Sarato Abdul Wahid, uh, Kamara, there was another man, Ayegu now. So we were seven. When the department was established, it started with degree program. Then later diploma, then later postgraduate program was introduced, specifically MSc and PGD. Okay. Then by 2014, additional two postgraduate programs were mounted in the department. Uh, they are run on weekend uh, basis, that is Friday, Saturday. Okay. Masters in Strategic Communication and Masters in Journalism. Okay. Then we also have a PhD program. I think uh, last year we admitted the third set of students okay. of the PhD program. So these are the uh, programs that are on in the department. Our diploma, some years back, the university based on the directive of NUC, they transferred the program from Mass Communication Department to IDR, that is Institute of Development uh, Research. The, the vision of the department is to provide training in journalism or mass communication area okay. and conduct research, because that is the mandate of any academic department in university. The mandate to admit students into the degree program is given to John. The requirement is there, you must have basic English and math credit, then plus additional three credit. Then there are also uh, cases of direct entry admission, okay. which candidates with uh, diploma or a diploma program and those who uh, have IGMB qualification. Okay. So these are the things we consider when it comes to admission. Our achievement, as I said, our mandate is to 
impart knowledge, that is training and conduct research. And so far, we have a substantial number of our graduates that are in the industry. And okay. from the reports we are receiving, they are doing very well, both nationally and internationally. And in terms of research, we have our, the academic staff of the department. They engage in various kinds of research within the discipline of mass communication. We have our departmental journal, which we publish some of the researches. And they also contribute in other academic journals and other universities. Uh, the challenges generally with uh, mass communication academic program is large number of applicants. In, uh, our quota, for, uh, for example, this year is 120. But we receive applicant around 2,000 plus. What you are admit is 120, and you are having 2,000 plus applicants. So the challenge is high when it comes to admission. Then another aspect of the challenge is facilities. Uh, mass communication is an academic pillar of study that requires practical training. And when you have a large number of students and you have to subject all of them to that practical training, you find out that you are overstretching the facilities. University on its own always respond to all it, although generally there is shortage of funds in the educational sector, but the university management, they are trying their, their best. Okay. Uh, because even last week we received 10 brand new computers just to equip our computer laboratory, which we use basically for training students and other issues that has to do with computation of exams and other academic uh, activities. Uh, students okay. are grossly lacking. Of course, it's a nice thing that uh, the BBC, uh, ABU, FM studio. Mm -hmm. Right now, they built a studio across the town. Uh, but uh, the challenge there again is that some of they didn't follow some of the specifications in terms of the need for a high ceiling, okay. because of the lighting for the studio and so on and so forth. And of course, the print, uh, we don't have our own print workshop. It's an idea that was conceived by some scholars okay. in mass communication discipline. I can remember that idea was introduced to ACSPN, Association of Communication Scholars and Professionals of Nigeria. Uh, the issue was presented, debated, and all the members agreed. I think the debate started in Abuja in 2016. In 2017, the annual conference was held in Kano. Okay. So before that, the ACSPN meets NUC, because NUC is the regulatory body of university in Nigeria. And they support the idea, and they engage them to come up with the curriculum be used to unbundle mass communication. Uh, then there is a workshop which I attended in Bahiro University, Kano. Then finally the document, the draft of the document was submitted to NBC sometimes last year. And we are waiting for, no, it's early this year, not last year, early this year. So we are waiting for, in fact, after submission of the curriculum, NUC make a categorical statement that yes, they accept the idea of unbundling mass comm. So what remains is for the NUC to send that document into universities for implementation. And when that document is 
sent out to university for implementation. That is when the issue of unbundling will start. Already before that, universities like Bayero University, Lagos State University, this already started with the idea of unbundling. Because unbundling is nothing more than that. MassCom will no longer be a program under either faculty of art or faculty of social science. It's going to be a faculty of its own with several programs. Because most communication as an academic field of study has different areas of socialization. So now the degree is no longer going to be on general mass comm, rather on the specific areas of socialization. For example, public relations, okay, advertising, okay, uh, journalism, studies, okay, uh, I think uh, development, communication, new media, you understand? So there are issues that I think from the documents submitted to NEC now, the embodiment is going to be on seven different degrees that will be run under faculty of mass communication. Okay. So Lagos State University, Bayero University, they already established faculty of communication. Like for Bayero University, I think with three degree programs that okay. are running now. So it's not a speculation, it's something that is on the pipeline, which we believe in some few uh, months, okay. uh, NUC will mandate all universities running mass communication to implement this initiative, which was accepted by NUC, and very soon it's going to be implemented in all the universities.